here today at the National Law Enforcement Museum in Washington, D.C. to take a closer look at this 2018 Dodge Charger pursuit vehicle as it's used by the Indiana State Police. The museum chose to feature the Indiana State Police on our squad car exhibit because according to our records, the Indiana State Police was one of the first agencies to issue all of their officers a standardized vehicle throughout the entire state. Looking at the car from the front, and what you're first going to notice is that it is equipped with the Satina push bar. This vehicle is equipped with a Satina push bar, which helps officers to pit vehicles more safely while in a pursuit and even push broken vehicles or debris off the side of the road. One of the benefits of this more modern police car is that it is equipped with spotlights. So what the spotlights really do for the officer is they provide light at the scene. So sometimes if they're pulling over a car in the middle of a highway, there may not be a lot of uh, illumination in the actual infrastructure of that area. So officers are reliant on the lights that they can provide. And up here on top of the squad car, we have a Code 3 manufactured light bar, which features red and blue emergency lights. The main purpose of a light bar is to communicate with other drivers while on the road. Officers can use the combination of lights along with sirens in order to tell other drivers to get out of the way because they need to get toward an emergency. This model that we have here at the museum has red and blue lights. That's typical for a majority of agencies. Um, however, some agencies may only have blue lights or only have red lights. So now we're going to take a look at the interior of our squad car. So first we're going to take a look at our Motorola radio. This helps officers to communicate with one another. Um, they can talk to other officers that are on their respective beats and communicate over the agency's radio, but it also connects them with dispatch. Officer Anna in route. Secondly, we have the Code 3 XL siren box. This is used to engage the siren, which is going to communicate with drivers on the road uh, in order to tell them to get out of the way if there's an emergency. On the top left, we have our toggle switch, which is going to activate different lights. So there are three settings here that activate different light modes um, when they are engaged. And then right beneath that, these two large buttons activate the air horn and the manual siren feature. Then the circle knob here in the center is going to activate various other siren tones that can alert drivers to move out of the way. So it starts on standby and there is a whale tone, yelp tone, and alternating tone as well. So this system is also equipped with a PA mic, which allows the officer to um, relay messages to drivers, to uh, people who they have pulled over and stopped on the side of the road. It allows them to use their voice through the siren's loudspeaker. Most law enforcement vehicles are also equipped with a CAD system, which is computer-aided dispatch. So there would typically be a laptop somewhere in this area. Because this is used as a museum exhibit, um, it's not featured in our vehicle. However, these CAD systems do allow officers to communicate with dispatch, look up records uh, when they're doing traffic stops, um, and keep in better communication with one another while on the road. So in the cab of the squad car, there's actually a utilization of additional spaces to carry equipment that may be used um, either on a day-to-day -day basis or even uh, in the case of the shotgun here, something that can be used as a last resort if force is needed in a situation. Um, so it just shows that this is a working vehicle um, for the officers to have all the tools that they need while they're on the road. Here up on the ceiling, we actually have a dome light that allows the officer to illuminate their space with either red or white light. And finally, we're going to take a look at the back of our squad car, which is the place that nobody really wants to be. Notice here on the door, there are no handles, so it can only be accessed from the outside. This is on purpose and barred doors um, so that they can't be, the windows can't be broken, can't escape through the windows.